Hello and welcome to Kingston Now. I'm Jimmy Buff. This week we'll hear about Hudson Valley Good Stuff, a website that's dedicated to good stuff happening in the Hudson Valley. We'll check out Lucy's Tacos in Uptown Kingston, and we'll start with Christopher Spatz from the Eastern Cougar Rewilding Foundation. Actually, I think I combined what it right. used to be called and what right. it's called now. What's it called now? The Cougar Rewilding Foundation. So the Cougar Rewilding Foundation is... Uh, a, a, an organization de dedicated to, I guess, the preservation of the cougar or the mountain lion? Yes, in a way. We, we tried to find, we spent a number of years trying to find evidence of cougars on the East Coast. When we didn't find anything after eight or nine years, we realized why we weren't finding any evidence. We decided to do what we could as advocates to bring them back to all other former range, including the East Coast. So you're actually here because, um, like, you, I've been fascinated by the idea of mountain lions or cougars in the Casco Mountains for the past 10 or 12 years. Right. Um, there are breathless stories of people who have seen cougars, who have uh, their best friend has seen a cougar, they've seen them all their lives, and in all that time, there's never been any real hard proof if there are cougars here in the Casco Mountains. No, not since the last evidence we have of anything in the New York State before this cat that came from the Black Hills a couple of years ago um, was 1894 in Herkimer County. That was the last cat taken in New York State. 1894? Because right. I'd always heard that they had existed into the 1930s before they were declared officially extinct. Well, they had bounty programs in every eastern state and New York's, I believe, was stopped in the 1880s um, when they stopped turning cougars in. Uh, and without those bounty programs, uh, you know, um, people uh, continued to look for them, continued to see them, um, but no evidence appeared. There was one that did show up in Tup Tupper Lake in 1968. It wasn't clear if he was killed, if he was shot, if he was hit by a car, um, whether he was an escapee from a zoo. Um, his body, I think, disappeared, um, but that's the only evidence that turned up during that time. Um, there was a, a kitten that was killed in Saratoga County in, two, in 1993 um, that was thought to be a bobcat. They traced that back, back to somebody who had one as a pet. The, 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 so there are someone watching right now going, oh, no, man, they're, they're, I know I, the, the DEC knows about it. They're just not telling us. Right. Um, and I've heard those stories, too. And whenever someone tells me that they've seen a mountain lion, I say, did you take a picture? Did you go out and pour some plaster of Paris and make a cast? And recently, a good friend of mine who I trust a lot was out running in the gunks and said, man, I came across these tracks. They're not dog. I, you know. And he and I have had these conversations a lot while we're out in the mountains together. So I hopped in my car, and the next day we went down and we poured plaster of Paris, and we came out with these casts right here, which look way bigger than a dog's footprint. Right. I took it home, and I measured it against my 140-pound dog's paw, and these are bigger, and I thought, We've got it. Right. So I contacted you. You came over and you brought some of your casts. Right. And what we have here is a dog, right? Yes. We do have <laughs> Point a dog. Out the we difference. got a big dog. <laughs> <laughs> big dog. Point out the difference. Well, what we have here is uh, if you look, we look at the shape of the print to start out, and you can see that it has overall a kind of oval shape. Mountain lion tracks, on the other hand, have a more roundish shape. You can see that there is lobing on the, on the, uh, the mountain lion track on the heel pad here. It has two lobes here, three lobes here. This one has one lobe here, two lobes here. Um, the toes on this track are fairly uniform. They're asymmetrical on a cougar track. You'll see some, very often you'll see nail indentations in um, a canine track, which we don't see on this. You never see them in a cougar track. Um, we also see a clear kind of X or star pattern between the toes and the heel pad, which you also will not see in a cougar track. Um, you can see that this, was, this is the right print. You can see how the toes all face the same, point the same way. Here you can't tell if that's left or right necessarily. Right, so those are some of the, um, the things that we look for, the contrasts we look for. And again, you know, 
cougars have big paws, but they leave very small prints in relation to their paws. Yeah, you it's know? amazing because one of the things that my friend said to me was, oh, they're really big. Right. They've got to be a mountain lion, but th they must be extraordinarily light on their feet to Absolutely. leave such small tracks. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So how often do you get calls like mine where you say, ah, oh, man, I've got the proof? Uh, we don't get them as much as we used to because we've kind of de-emphasized the search part of this. Uh, so you're pretty convinced that there are none in, in, in right. this region? Yes. And so you've moved on to perhaps hoping to introduce right. the mountain lion here? Now right. what would that mean for the area? Because for me, when I hear about that, I think, well, you know, I'm not all that excited about the idea of running through the Catskills with, right. you know, the occasional bear that hears me coming and runs away, mm -hmm. or maybe a, a bobcat or something that's scared. Mountain lions have a sort of different, and I might be wrong about this, not knowing completely as much about them as you do, but they seem to have a predatory nature. They do, um, but, but it's, not, it's not directed at us. But uh, it can be. It can be, but there have only been three people killed since 1998. The problem is that when the news appears, it goes viral. The survivors often end up on the Today Show. Yeah, it's very dramatic. Right, too. exactly. Yeah. Um, like whereas, shark attacks. Exactly. And, you know, whereas, you know, what, what animal do you think actually kills more people than any other one? Yeah, a dog probably, right? Deer. Deer. Oh, right, Vehicle of course. collisions with deer kill 200 people and injure 200,000 a year. Um, compared to cougar incidents, which, as I said, we've had three incidents, three people killed since 1998, um, 29 overall in the United States and Canada since the 1890s, um, you know, about four to five incidents a year. Uh, these aren't attacks, they are hunting us. Almost all the cats that are implicated in these incidents are young juveniles out on their own for the first time. They're not raised or trained or evolved to hunt us. For every once in a while, one of these younger cats uh, decides they want to take a crack at us. And what would it take to introduce them, reintroduce them to the area? It would take a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it would take a lot. All right. Uh, well, we'll leave it at that. And, and uh, yeah. thank you so much, by the way, for responding immediately to when I reached out and, and contacted you. And um, I just still find it so fascinating. So, uh, uh, you know, I'll be following the rewilding efforts. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Christopher. You're watching Kingston Now. Next, it's Good Stuff with Vanessa Geneva Ahern of Hudson Valley Good Stuff, a destination website to guide people to good things in the Hudson Valley. Welcome back to Kingston Now. Hudson Valley Good Stuff is a website dedicated to helping folks find places to eat, play, and recharge their spirits in the Hudson Valley. And with us now is Editor-in-Chief Vanessa Geneva Ahern. Now, I said that about eat, play, and recharge your spirit, because that's mm -hmm. what it says on your website. Exactly. That's my tagline. That's your mission statement. Exactly. That's a nice mission <laughs> statement. How do you yeah. help people do those things? Um, well, I'm always going to new restaurants. I try to cover as many events as I can. And I, I also reach out to uh, spas, yoga studios. And now that people are getting to know me, I'm getting more people who are letting me know about events that are coming up. So I try to always be sort of ahead of the curve. <laughs> so how did um, Hudson Valley Good Stuff get its start? Uh, well, I started in, in January 2009, and I'm a, I'm, I have a writing background. And, and people were saying, a lot of different writers were saying, if you're a writer, you have to have a blog. And the idea appealed to me, but I didn't really know what to blog about. And I, I moved into the Hudson Valley in Woodstock in 2003. And I was sort of in this honeymoon phase, falling in love with the Hudson Valley. And so I thought of the domain name first, HudsonValleyGoodStuff.com. I had a light bulb moment. I went online to make sure it was available. And then that's really how the, the blog got started. There is a lot of good stuff in the Hudson it, Valley, There right? really is. <laughs> yeah. So how do you come across the, the things that you put on the website? Some people tip you off. Some is it, is it just your own exploration of the area? It's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whenever, I, I mean, for example, Mother's Day is coming up. I, I try to reach out to different restaurants, find out who's offering Mother's Day brunches. I have a pretty strong Facebook following now, so I get a lot of tips that way. How many people... Um, do you know how, how many people you're reaching with Hudson Valley Good Stuff? Any idea? Um, well, right now it's uh, the visitor, unique visitors. It kind of goes between 6,000 to 8,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's pretty much doubled the readership uh, since last year this time. So almost doubled. So I'm pretty excited about that. And also I'm also blogging for the Chronogram now three times a week. That started last December. So, 
getting more readers that way. So how do people find out about Hudson Valley Good Stuff? I mean, uh, how are you getting the word out about mm -hmm. the, the site to people? Um, well, I started writing for the Chronogram, and I also tweet. I'm very active in so social media, and I cover a lot of different events, and uh, I think people find out about me that way. And also, they also found out, find out about the site just through kind of organic Google searches, they find me, so. Oh, that's a great way. Yeah. To, yeah, sure. People looking for things to do, and they're exactly. going to come across and, your and, website. And I've been writing for four years now, so it's just sort of happened naturally. I'm not even a C SEO expert, but that's just how it's happened. So. Are you advertised supported? Is that how? how uh, I mean, what does this do? How do you maintain the website? Uh, are you still writing for other publications? So yeah, I do a little. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I do. Um, I, I mean, I also I write for Green Door Magazine, and I'm also written for. You know, national women's magazines as well um, here and there and um, I'm also trying to get more advertisers of course and there have been people who have supported me right from the right from the beginning I mean if you see the I have about a dozen or so ads on the site now so I'm, I have a few more in the pipeline for the spring and summer when I think more people are coming to the Hudson Valley and looking for good stuff so I'm pretty excited Tell me some good stuff. What's coming up? <laughs> well, there's the um, the Gardner Cupcake Festival is coming up. And Anything having to do with cupcakes is good stuff. Exactly. Without a doubt. And last year I was a cup media judge for the amateur cu cupcake contest. I had How to, many cupcakes uh, did you have to eat? Uh, 20, I, I tasted 27 cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> Took a bite out of tw about 27 cupcakes. Uh -huh. So I'll be doing that again at uh, Wright's Farm. And there's a Hudson Valley Pizza Fest coming? And yes, there this is. This is breaking news. Yeah, it is breaking news. <laughs> yeah. It's the first one. That's coming up on April 28th. And where will that take place? Uh, Hopewell Junction. Mm -hmm. And that's at the uh, Arbor, Arbor, Arbor Ridge. I Any idea of how many pizza establishments are going to be involved? Um, I think at least, he hasn't really given me a, a total yet, but I'm, I'm at least a dozen. I think it's getting a lot of buzz on Facebook. Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly certain I yeah. can taste 27 different slices right. if they're looking for judges for that. <laughs> what else do we have going on? Uh, well, there's a Kingston Film Festival coming up, which is coming up in early August. Sure, that'll be the second Kingston Film Festival, oh, right? right? Second, second annual, yeah. Uh -huh. Right, and before, and um, yeah, and then there's the Bagel Festival, the first Bagel Festival, that's, which is happening in Monticello, New York, uh, in August as well. That's um, August 16th to the 17th. What about um, spirit? What can people do for their spirits? So you've got places to play mm -hmm. and places to eat. What do people do to recharge that spirit here in Hudson Valley? What are you telling folks? Um, well, there you can either go to a spa or um, or you can also go for a walk. Say Poets Walk in Red Hook is nice. Um, I tried going to the Zen Monastery one Wednesday night. <laughs> they have a, um, a, a meditation um is that the one uh, in Woodstock on uh, it's Road? A, it's in uh, Mount Tremper. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. The other, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have an open, uh, it's open to the public on Wednesday evening. So I tried that out. That's a, that was uh, interesting, relaxing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hard for me to sit down in one place for a while. But that was, I really enjoyed that. Where would you like to see Hudson Valley good stuff go? Would you like it to be the go-to destination for people looking for things to do in the Hudson Valley? Is that I, the goal? I like to. I like it to become more of a portal. Mm -hmm. For people just to, to go there and find out what's going, what's happening in the Hudson Valley, I'm going to be getting a, a sort of a, a blog makeover uh, this summer, try to make it more user-friendly. And eventually, I'd like to be able to, because there's just only one of me, <laughs> I'd like to be able to hire different writers to cover uh, different events in the Hudson Valley because uh, I can't go to everything, and it would be great to sort of have Hudson Valley Good Stuff correspondence all over the Hudson Valley. <laughs> Did you have any idea that it would lead to where it is today when you started it? Not really. I just sort of, it just sort of started as a labor of love. I mean, I, I love to go to restaurants and find out what's good. And if I, and if I have a, a negative experience at a restaurant, I don't vlog about it. So it's really the, the place, if you're reading something on Hudson Valley Good Stuff, it means I've had a good experience or it's had a very good reputation. Yeah, you'd have now. to change yeah. the name of the website exactly. to Hudson Valley Good and Bad. Stuff <laughs> right. I, don't want, yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> well, terrific. It's a great website and Thank we appreciate you. you stopping by today. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Thanks. This is Kingston Now. Next, we're going to take you to Lucy's Tacos in Uptown Kingston. You're watching Kingston Now and we're headed out to grab some good food at Lucy's Tacos on John Street in Uptown Kingston. Hi, I'm Trisha Trinetsky. I'm the owner of Lucy's Tacos. We've been here in Uptown Kingston for eight years. 
We picked up town Kingston because I really like the area. It's changed a lot. It was a very small community eight years ago. You know, you had the people that were here working um, in the off, you know, the county building and, the, and stuff. And that was about it. You know, you had your lunch crowd. It was really quiet at night. And now there's, you know, all different types. You know, I have, you know, the customers that I've built, you know, families that come regularly. There's people here at night because there's so many more restaurants. We have, you know, the weekend people, which is a whole nother crowd, the farmer's market crowd, that whole thing. And we have, you know, still have all the business people too. So I, you know, it's, and it's becoming hip apparently. <laughs> It's news to me. That might make me leave, actually. <laughs> I don't want to be too hip. <laughs> What's on the menu? <laughs> we do tacos, burritos, salads, soups, nachos. Very simple. Everything small batch, fresh. Um, the pr uh, affordable price point. In and out, you know, five minutes. We can have it ready for you. That kind of stuff. What makes a good taco? whatever it is that is fresh that I put in it. I, try, I'm, it's not, I don't do anything traditional. So it's not like, I'm not a Mexican restaurant. I'm more Tex-Mex, but I'm not even really that. The, the goal is, is to get fresh food that's quick and affordable and easy to eat for families. So that's why some of our stuff is a little different, like the salad and the taco kind of thing. And you know, I'm a bit of a pat rack pack rat myself. So believe it or not, a lot of this stuff I already had from years of junking and yard sailing and that kind of stuff. So that's it. Anything that I see that's kind of Southwest, Tex-Mex, funky, fun. And now people just bring stuff to me all the time, all the time. I got two things this week from customers that just brought me stuff. We don't do desserts, but we serve Jane's ice cream, which is made locally right around the corner. And if you remember, Bob and Amy had their own restaurant here for years, but now they just do the uh, wholesale ice cream. It's the best ice cream in the world. That is my opinion. Lucy's Tacos is open seven days a week, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., and we're cash only.
That's it for this week's show. Thanks to Christopher Spatz of the Cougar Rewilding Foundation. Thanks to Vanessa Geneva Ahern of Hudson Valley Good Stuff. And thanks to the folks at Lucy's Tacos. Remember, all of our previous shows are available on our YouTube channel. And you can find that link on our Facebook page. For Kingston Now, I'm Jimmy Buff. We'll see you next time.